You have a fintech that's focused on decentralized finance. Give us a sense. What separates your app from all the other ones out there and how are you trying to disrupt the traditional financial system? Yeah, what separates Solo from everything else in the market is largely that it's completely powered by the people which means that borrowers actually have the opportunity to create their own loan terms, which is not available anywhere else in the market. And they can post those loan terms to a, an open marketplace where anyone can elect to actually fund those loan requests directly. Meaning that a borrower can elect how much money they need, what they need it for, when they can pay it back, and if they're willing to pay anything in addition to principal. And an, an individual lender could actually connect to the reason why that borrower needs that, that capital, and they can fund that loan directly. So it's completely community finance and the real definition of what community banking should be. So kind of peer-to-peer -peer lending. Exactly. Exactly. No institutional capital. All directly peer-to-peer. -peer. All right. So right now, speaking of institutional capital, we're facing a banking crisis. We have elevated inflation. A lot of people are calling for a possible recession. How would your app come into play if we do see that economic slowdown? Yeah, I think it's twofold. Um, you know, one, getting access to capital is incredibly important, particularly in this macro environment. More people, um, you know, with inflation and just overall cost of living increases are, are, are unable to absorb financial shock. And they're looking for access to more equitable small dollar loans. On the flip side of that, you have individuals who are chasing yield um, and returns. And, and with that, we're providing one of the best and most attractive returns in the market um, in, in a very decentralized way. We like to say that we're the true definition of, of decentralized finance. So as we see credit conditions and loan conditions tighten up, are you expecting to see uh, more people come to your app, maybe a, a broader range of people come into your app? Absolutely. And I, I think we've seen that over the life of the company. You know, when, when we would have government shutdowns, you know, individuals would be using our, our platform who would normally not be in the market for a small dollar loan. You know, COVID was a significant tailwind for us as we saw more people uh, suffering from, you know, the, the financial circumstances of COVID. Um, and, and, and now what we're seeing is, is just more people who need access to this emergency gap filling capital. But again, with individuals who are also chasing that yield generating opportunity as well as the markets are, 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 are quite uh, <laughs> in tumultuous at this time. All right, so Travis, I want to ask you about one thing. Um, you have faced some criticism for a tip feature on your site where people that get the loans, they're asked to pay a tip. Um, some regulators, some critics say that actually makes the loans have an interest, an elevated rate of interest instead of the zero APR that you advertise. What would you say? Yeah, what I would say to that is, you know, we, we live in a tipping, you know, economy. You know, every day people are tipping people for different things, whether it's delivering their Postmates on time, whether it's the Uber driver, or it's the waiter who brings their, you know, filet mignon on time. The, the reality is, is that these individuals are, are appreciative of some stranger who's offering them the ability to take care of their short-term emergency need. And that's exactly what we think should happen. You know, what I'm excited about is that we have been able to work with regulators, and uh, I'll use California in, in the District of Columbia as an example, where we have recently create, created and crafted a path forward. And, and what we're most excited about is that they were willing to listen to our story and understand where we were coming from and, and, and understand that our intentions are pure and we want to provide the best possible opportunity for people to get this capital. The, the last piece that I would say is that it's very important that, you know, regulators are open to, to hearing innovative models and that regulation by enforcement is not the, the, the status quo and that they're, you know, open to, uh, you know, considering new opportunities.